Hello everyone. Thank you for joining me here today. I am Koshiki, a fifth year student of operations management at Kellogg. And today I'll be talking about my paper titled Offering Differentiated Services When Customers Learn Socially. To give you a bit of a background, my work lies at the intersection of three distinct fields of operations, social learning, service differentiation, and operational externalities. Social learning refers to the phenomena of using the experiences and opinions of others to form your own beliefs. For example, before you try out a new restaurant, you would probably go on Yelp and check out their reviews. Service differentiation, on the other hand, is a really common technique implemented by firms where they offer customers a choice of different service grades, uh, which are typically served, uh, priced differently, and customers choose the appropriate service grade based on their needs. Another interesting feature of services is the presence of operational externalities. That is, the decisions of the customers not only affect their own service quality, but also that of other customers in the system. The key question we would be asking is as follows. In scenarios where customers learn about the service quality based on the information shared by their peers, that is, by social learning, is service differentiation still sustainable? Further, should a rational customer even rely on social information, which is typically incomplete? Or are they better off using their own experiences with the firm about which they have complete information? To, the answer is, well, sometimes. But before we delve into the details, let me give you a quick example. Let's consider a typical service differentiating firm, say, First American Home Warranty. A home warranty firm operates in the following fashion. At the start of every month, you pay them a fee, and every time something breaks down, they come and fix it for you. So First American has two service plans. One is the basic plan priced at $28 a month, which includes the repair of all your major home appliances, and the significantly more expensive, the premier plan, which includes repair of all your home, expense, uh, home appliances, as well as the repair of any sort of major home issues, like let's say they would also come and fix your plumbing. Let's consider a typical customer of First American, say Vicky from Florida. Now, Vicky signs up for service with First American, and it turns out her experience with them is really, really good. Her AC breaks down, she calls them, and they come and fix it immediately. Now, when the time comes for Vicky to renew her contract, she begins to wonder, what kind of service quality can she expect in a different grade? Was her grade experience a fluke, or does everyone in her service grade obtain similar excellent service? Now, Vicky has two options. She can either rely on her own experiences with First American and make her purchase decision, or she could go online and try to see what other people have to say about about First American and somehow use that information as well. Let's suppose Vicky chooses the latter. She goes on Yelp and it turns out that the reviews about First American are really, really mixed. Some have called and called, but First American has simply refused to respond. While others had the issues fixed immediately after con contacting First American. Now notice that Vicky does not know any of these people. She does not know what kind of people they are. She does not know what service grade they have opted for. Now, how should Vicky go about incorporating this information in her decision making? Should she even use this incomplete information for a service decision? Or is she better off using her own interactions and experiences with First American for his choice? We will be answering this question via the following framework. We'll consider a firm which provides two grades of service, A and B, and it serves two types of customers, the high type and the low type. It's a multi-period setting where customers have a belief about each service grade. Based on their beliefs, they choose the, decision, the service grade they consider optimal for them. And these beliefs are formed via social learning, that is, using the information shared by others in the system. The customers decide the service grade based on their beliefs, and the decisions of the customers also impact the service quality. The research question we ask is as follows. Do the customers learn the service quality after repeatedly interacting with the firm? 
Should rational customers even rely on social information? Or are they better off using their own experiences with the firm for their decision making? Before we delve into the details, let's consider a simple example. We use a queuing setting, which is very traditional in service differentiation. We consider homogeneous customers who are being served in one service grade, which are priced at a fixed point P. It's still a multi-period model where customers come in and decide whether they want to opt for service or not. The customers all have a fixed cost C of obtaining service and they obtain a reward VI uh, upon completion and they will only choose to obtain service if their perceived benefit overrides the cost incurred on service. Their belief about the perceived quality is a formed by social learning, that is using experiences of others in the other customers in the system in conjunction with their own interactions with the firm. So do the customers reach a consensus in terms of their beliefs? In this graph, on the x-axis, we plot the perceived mean of the customers and on the y-axis, we plot their frequency of customers who have their perceived mean in a certain range. At period five, the histogram of beliefs is fairly spread out. At period 50, it's a lot more concentrated. At period 100, it basically coalesces around in the same region. So the customers of a type do reach a consensus in terms of their, uh, in terms of the social, uh, in terms of the service quality. But do they accurately learn the service quality? In this graph, we plot on the x-axis the relative error, that is the difference between the service quality and the perceived service quality at steady state. And on the y-axis, we plot the frequency. As you can see, in steady state, the relative error is concentrated around zero. So the customers do learn the true service time means. Thus, when a firm serves a homogeneous group of customers in one grade, the mean belief of the uh, mean mean belief about the posterior distributions of the customers converge, and the two customers learn this true service mean accurately. So really, after so interacting with the system multiple times, the customers obtain have full information about the service quality that they would they can expect to receive. But does it still hold when customers are not homogeneous? What, when, what happens when customers are served in different service grades? To this end, let's talk a little bit about the literature that our work is connected to. Typically, service differentiation by pricing, which is a very well-studied topic in literature and operations, considers that the information obtained by customers um, is complete. The customers have full uh, prior information about the service quality they can expect or on each grade, even before they opt for service. But this is typically not true, and this information is accumulated by repeatedly interacting with the firms as well as obtaining information from their peers in the system. To this end, the key question that we ask is as follows. The insights that we obtain from traditional service differentiation models do they still hold when customers learn socially? Further, is social information a rational choice? Or should customers simply rely on their personal experiences about which they have complete information? We will answer these questions via the following model. We'll consider a firm which provides service in grades A and B, which are priced differently. And the firm serves customers in two, of two types, the high type and the low type, who differ in their cost of service as well as the reward they obtain upon completion of service. For the first half of the talk, I will consider that at every period, the customers use social information for decision making. And in the second half, we will come back to investigate if social learning can be sustained as an equilibrium strategy. That is, if at the beginning of each period, customers have the choice between social and private learning, which one do they opt for? If at every period they opt for private learning, uh, opt for social learning, then social learning would emerge as an equilibrium strategy. As I mentioned, this is a multi-period model. 
what happens during a model or within a period. At the very beginning, the firm sets prices RA and RB. Customer I joins the system, he has some initial beliefs. Based on his initial beliefs, he makes a service decision whether to go for service grade A, service grade B, or no service at all. Based on a service decision, he obtains a service experience and at the same time, he obtains a random uh, sample of service experiences of other customers in the system. He wants to use both of these in order to update his beliefs. Now, ideally, this decision should be based on all the interactions and all facets of the service system. In other words, the customer should be fully Bayesian. Unfortunately, Bayesian learning is NP hard in this setting. Indeed, we assume that customers have beliefs about the service quality associated to each grade, which are given by gamma distribution. And the updated beliefs also follow a gamma distribution, albeit with different parameters. So how does this updating work? Customer I joins the system. He has his own service experience. And at the same time, he observes a random sample of service experiences of other customers in the system. Notice that he only ob obtains the numeric value of the service experience, not the information about what kind of customers they are generated from or what are the associated service grades. So customer I assigns each of these observations a likelihood score based on his own beliefs about the service quality across each grade which captures the probability of each observation being generated from either service grade A or service grade B. The customer uses this weighed experiences as well as his own service experience in order to update his own beliefs. The updating rule is as follows. It's a lot of ugly math, but the key point here is that the posterior distribution can be decomposed into a sum of the prior parameters the information accumulated from private learning, as well as the social information accumulated by the customer. The first question we want to ask ourselves here is does a steady state exist in this setting? If there was no learning in the system, the decisions of the customers that was considered optimal at period one would continue to be considered optimal at every subsequent period. However, as a consequence of social learning, the beliefs of the customers may change. As a result, the customer may consider a decision optimal at period t, which is different from the decision that he considered optimal at period t minus one. Consequently, as the service parameters also depend on the customer's decisions, that may change over time as well. Fortunately, we can show that for any prices set by the firm, the sequence of posterior mean beliefs for each service grade of the customers converge. Further, the decisions of the customers are the, uh, converge as well, and the system reaches a steady state. But how does the steady state look? In this graph, we plot on the top the relative error that is the difference between the true perceived mean and the true mean for all customers of high type, and on the bottom for all customers of the low type. And on the y-axis, we plot the frequency. If the customers learn the true service quality, this, this histograms would be concentrated around zero. Unfortunately, as you can see, this is not true. The customers do not learn the true service means. Do customers of a type reach a consensus? On the x-axis, we plot the time period, and on y-axis, we plot the proportion of customers of a particular type who choose a decision, particular decision at that time period. If the customers of a type reach a consensus, then these graphs would be, uh, should have a line around zero and one. Unfortunately, that is also not true. So in this imperfect learning steady state, customers do not learn the true expected service quality. And customers of the same type do not reach a consensus. We, we really now want to understand the social learning even a good, is it even an optimal choice for customers? Can social learning be justified as an equilibrium strategy? Or customers are better off using their own personal experiences with the firm? At every period, if customers are given the choice between social and private learning, 
should, if they prefer private uh, social learning at every step, then social learning would emerge as an equilibrium strategy. We can show while the inherent stochasticity of the system excludes any sort of best response strategy, we can show that social learning emerges as an epsilon best response and it supports that imperfect learning equilibrium as an epsilon Nash equilibrium. Indeed, the expected profit from deviating to private learning is bounded. And the stronger the customer's beliefs are, the more observations he has consulted to form his beliefs, the more periods he has built his beliefs on, the less willing he is to deviate from social learning. So we have re obtained the imperfect learning equilibrium, which has two key features. Where customers of the same type do not reach a consensus and they do not learn the true service quality. However, social learning still emerges as an epsilon best response. The key question here is, what really drives social learning in this setting? To answer this, we consider a different model where the firm decides a priori which customers to assign service grade A to. They charge everyone the fixed price R, and the customers also have the same cost of delay and obtain the same reward upon completion of service. Now, the customers can only decide whether to opt for service or not. They cannot decide which service grade to opt for. In this setting, we want to investigate if private learning can be sustained as an equilibrium strategy. Again, at the beginning of each period, if customers have the choice between private and social learning, if they opt for private learning at every turn, it would emerge as a best response leading to private learning emerging as an equilibrium. We can show that in this case, private learning emerges as an epsilon best response strategy. And the stronger your beliefs are, the less willing you are to deviate from private learning. So what have we obtained? In the presence of service choice, social learning emerges as an epsilon best response and the customers reach an imperfect learning equilibrium. Without service choice, private learning emerges as an epsilon best response and the customers reach a separating equilibrium. Indeed, the more decisions the customers have, the more ambiguity there is, social learning emerges as a better choice. We have developed a model that considers the long run impact of social learning where customers have service uh, differentiation. Social learning leads to the imperfect learning equilibrium and is the epsilon best response. Without service choice, private learning emerges as an epsilon best response and the customers reach a separating equilibrium. The more choices the customers have, the more randomness they face. The resulting ambiguity leads to social learning, even though as a consequence of it, customers do not learn the true service quality, neither do they reach a consensus with their peers. With that, thank you very much for your attention and have a good day.